Hello and welcome to the Reality TV Cringe Podcast. I am one of your hosts, Delia, here with my real tight homegirl and my daughter-in-law, Beatrice. What's up, hoes? We are happy to be here today Mm -hmm. to talk Vanderpump Rules. Yes, bitch. Yeah. Another interesting episode. Mm -hmm. Lots of little tidbits in there. With a whole lot of Joe. Yeah, a lot of Joseph. And I'm going to have some things to say about that. But Mm -hmm. before we get into it, we have to remind you to please hide your wife and hide your kids. This is a politically incorrect podcast. We say bad words. We have controversial opinions, which just means we have dumb opinions. Yeah. So if you're sensitive and if you need a hug box, this is not the dumpster for you. No. But if you are down to party and just have some fun, this is the dumpster for you. Yes. And if you are down to party, join us on uh, Instagram mm-hmm. at Reality TV Cringe and join us on Patreon, patreon.com slash Reality TV Cringe. That's where all of our bonus content is and up it's on the there. the best way to support yes. us. Like if you like our pod and you like the stuff we're doing, then help us to continue yeah. the pod. Please and, and thank support you. support us on Patreon. Thank you so much. Yeah. Now, if you are watching on YouTube, also thank you for being here. Please don't forget to like and comment and share and subscribe. Every single thing you do helps us in the algorithm, which mm-hmm. means it helps us to grow. And I've noticed on some of our videos, we have people leaving like multiple comments. Thank you. And I love that. Yes. That really does help YouTube yeah. to pick us up and recommend us to other raccoons. Yes, we appreciate it. All right, before we get into this episode, which is I think the 11th episode of uh-huh. season 11. I forget the title. Yeah. <laughs> Who cares? Yeah, nobody cares. Um, Do you have any sort of ideas, takeaways, themes that you want to touch upon? Yeah, I think Schwartz is a piece of shit. I think he's yeah. a big pile of human shit. I think I just think he's like a snake. I, I get where you're meaning when you've been mentioning throughout our recaps that he's just got this aw shucks, like mm-hmm. he plays it off like he's such a nice guy and he means well, but no. I think he's conniving. I think he's a piece of shit. I don't like him. Yeah, he's got that toxic masculinity. Mm-hmm. I would much prefer if he was very direct and straightforward yeah. with his douchebaggery yeah. and his misogyny, mm-hmm. but he tries to hide it behind this simpering, I'm just a good guy affect. Yeah. But no, you keep doing this over and over again, and primarily to women. Yeah. So you're not a good guy. No. And your hair looks stupid. Dude, the bleach blonde hair is so fucking cringe to me. Wild. I can't. Like, how do you let somebody walk out of your salon <laughs> looking like that? It looked like there were other stylists in the room that were like, mm, how's your head doing? Mm. Is it burning? How do you like this? Because it looks terrible. It looks really bad. Yeah. And I'm like, you're 42, dude. Like, yeah. It's me like 42 or 41 or something. Yes. I'm like, that's cringe. Yeah. So he's probably in the throes of a full on midlife crisis. Good. And then my takeaway would have to be just my ruminations about Joe because I'm trying to peg her. Like, what's going on with her? Do you Mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like, are you full on in love with Tom Schwartz? Just because I can't conceive of a world where anybody would be doesn't mean that she's not. (sighs) But at the same time, he seems to be saying some of the right things. Like, I don't want a relationship or I'm single and she's single and we're dating other people. And so I'm trying to figure out why it's such a blindside or a surprise to her that he's doing this because she seems like she's in love with him. And I feel like behind the scenes, he's encouraging her. Yep. He's leading her on. That's what I think. I think he says the right things on camera to make him look like he's an honest good guy or whatever. But no, I think behind closed doors when he calls Joe up for a pity fuck because nobody else wants to fuck him because he's a 42 year old bleach blonde loser Mm -hmm. who just (laughs) goes home at night with a broken dick. Yes. It cannot be too big. Yes. And so like Joe's like, sure, we'll go over there. And then he tells her he loves her after he nuts. And it's just like cringe it's cringe af and i feel really sorry for her because like in that scene when they're trying to have a conversation about the state of their relationship as quirky and maybe odd as she is i feel like her tears are real yep and i think after the singles night she was really really surprised by his behavior now i did actually listen to a podcast with um joe and raquel or Mm -hmm. rachel it was on rachel's podcast so when we get to that section i'll kind of share what joe had to say about that singles night because it didn't happen the way it was shown (gasps) on television gasp 
yes, editing and production fuckery was afoot. Mm. So we'll get into all of that. But yeah, I just feel bad for Joe. Me too. Um, she seems kind of sweet. Yeah. Like when she's sitting there in her little meditative pose and her interstitials in an outfit that like, <laughs> like when you compare and contrast her outfit with everybody else's styling and yeah. makeup i mean she's obviously different one of these things is not like the other yeah and i just always root for an underdog i feel bad for her i know she's not meant for la that's mm -mm. for fucking sure she's meant for like well, denver kind of colorado seems yeah colorado <laughs> but she kind of seems to fit in with like surfer culture yeah to totes, me yeah that kind of california culture but this group of fake ass people mm -mm. yeah she does not fit in but that also doesn't mean that she's blameless because right. i do believe she went with Sandoval and Raquel and Schwartz to Big Bear oh. and so she knew I mean how dumb do you have to be not to put two and two together to, to, together to figure out that something was going on so like she's not blameless yeah but she's a human and I feel bad I agree I think 100%. the world is making fun of her and she can't necessarily help how she is. Right, exactly. Especially when she's contrasted with these fake ass people. Right. Yeah. I agree 100%. So do you want to get into the episode? Yeah, let's get into it, Any. All right. Well, the episode starts with the conclusion from the beach day. Yes. Last episode. So Ariana's still pissed off. I feel like she's rightfully defensive sure. because everybody's coming out coming on to her like come on just get over it like sandoval's a good guy like brock fucking right making I mean, you castrated him yeah oh my god you emasculated shut him. up uh, and her point is like well but he deserves it yeah and mm -hmm. brock is trying to tell her kind of what i said last week and that is well like you're also taking jabs and she made a good point and put me in my place. And she's like, yeah, but I didn't do anything to him. Yeah. He's the one who did all of this. And so I have every single right to be upset and to say things. Yeah. Because he's the one who fucked me over. And you guys should getting should be getting him in check, which I respected. And I guess Lala tried to enter the chat again <laughs> and talk to her like about, but when are we going to be able to get to a place and she just shuts Lala down. Yeah, she does, which I did respect. And I thought she was like coming off very justified, just being like, yeah, what did I do? But I wanted to ask you because mm -hmm. we've kind of talked about like Ariana and her temper and like maybe she wasn't treating Sandoval right. Mm -hmm. Like, do you think she's justified in saying like, I never did anything to him? Okay, well, let me come at that question as the elder in the room, okay, as somebody in my 50s who's been married a million yeah, times. Right. Anytime a relationship, a long-term relationship falls apart, it's not just one person's fault. Facts. Um, I'm sure that Ariana did her fair share of shit in that relationship to degrade the integrity of it. But that all pales in comparison when somebody goes out and cheats. Yeah. So it kind of is unfortunate for Tom because he may have some valid points about the state of their relationship and maybe she could have done more and done things differently. But that all pales in comparison to the absolute betrayal of fucking her best friend. So yeah. it doesn't really matter. And so she's making that point. She's like, yeah, well, he's the one who did everything wrong. And obviously she did stuff that was wrong too in the relationship. But as she's saying it, I'm agreeing with her. Yeah. He's the one who fucked all of this up. So he should sit there and take it. Better yet, don't come to the beach right. and force my hand into an argument, which is what it feels like they all want to happen. Totally. Is to see Ariana go the fuck off or break down. Oh, totally. And it's like, if you are going to go to these functions with Ariana, Tom, then just stop talking shit. Like, just try to be the bigger person or just like, don't even interact with her. Don't fucking talk to her. But like, he's always just kind of trying to push her buttons and try to push the situation. And so after this big old blow up at the beach, then he leaves with Tom Schwartz and he's like, I'm going to leave. I'm going to give her some space because she's heated right now. And I just want to make sure she's okay. And I'm like, yeah, no, you don't. You don't no, actually you care. You don't care at all yeah. about that and the thing is is that even if ariana started it which i think she did at the beach yeah when she made a comment about co-parenting the animals and blah 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 like she started she took a couple of jabs he should still shit sit there and shut the fuck up right and if she's got some jabs and she's got some anger just take it that's the least that you can do as you're forcing yourself into this friend group where she has to sit there and be around you yeah like just take it roll with it hopefully it dies down 
after a period of time. But he can't do that because he's a narcissist mm -hmm. and it's all about him and how he appears to other people. 100%. And he wants to be the victim. So he's happy when she flips out. Oh, for like sure. When he's standing away from the tent at the beach, he's asking Schwartz, oh, is Ariana emotional? She having a breakdown? He wants that. Yeah. Because he knows that's separating the group. Yes, 100%. And he like he thrives off of that negative interaction, even though he has a narc, like he wants anything he can get from people. And so then when he goes to the little beach bar or whatever yeah. with Schwartz, what did you think about their conversation? Because Sandoval immediately kind of starts talking shit about Ariana again and just talking about like the house and how she's fighting over the furniture and he's like, well, I fucking buy everything else. Like I buy all the groceries and the batteries and yeah, stuff. Stupid. She's in for a rude awakening right. when she lives on her own. Like, what'd you think about that? I just find that to be campaigning for the cameras and campaigning for the affection of the friend group. But I mean, Tom already knows, Tom Schwartz already knows all this. Mm -hmm. The only reason you're saying it to him again and reiterating it is because there's a camera pointed at you and you're on a campaign to smear Ariana yeah. and get people to like you more. This is your redemption arc. So I honestly don't even remember what he said because he said this kind of shit over and over again. And it's like, mwah, 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 mwah. You're saying words, I'm hearing nothing. Yeah. Well, and even the producers called him out in his talking head because he's bitching about this. And they're like, dude, you got reamed over the internet over this exact thing. Why are you saying it again? He's like, well, I just think Ariana's in for a rude awakening. So was there talk like last season about this? Did he say this after season 10? I don't 10? recall that. I mean, I guess maybe he did. But as we know, Ariana recently purchased her own home in mm -hmm. her own fucking name for like 1.6 million dollars mm -hmm. this is maybe the treehouse home that she wants and nobody can ever take it away from her and also she just announced a new campaign with dsw warehouse oh dang so she's uh, i don't know if she's a brand ambassador but like she's the face of dsw so she stays in her money and in her coins yes so that queen. she can afford this and i don't think she's gonna be worried about batteries and and strong. <laughs> I think she'll be just fine. Thanks. She'll have Anne buy it for her. Yeah. <laughs> when yes. she's her new assistant. Yes. God, what a dick. He's just proving her right too. Just like talking mad shit constantly to try and turn everybody away from her. Mm -hmm. It's just fucked up. And then we have like kind of a segue into Tori, who's this new girl. Yeah. So like Sheena's in her talking head talking about how she set up Tom Short Schwartz with this chippy named Tori. But then once she sets Schwartz up with Tori, Katie somehow he hears about it. And then she's like, cool, I want to date her too. So this mm -hmm. is the the segue <laughs> into this weird love triangle between Schwartz and Katie because and Tori. right under his nose at the bar, Katie steals her yes. away and basically just says, go talk to those people over there. Like, yes. I'm over here. I've got the big dick energy. I'm going to hang out with Tori. And he does. I know. He slinks away to another <laughs> table and <laughs> it's know. Katie and Tori. I was just kind of side-eyeing Tori a little bit. I mean, she's... 24 years old mm -hmm. she's awfully young she's very bubbly yeah um, also known as annoying yeah. but <laughs> if katie likes it i love it i mean i thought it was pretty choice that katie just immediately kisses her at the bar like when tori just asked schwartz for a date and he's like yeah sure that's cool that this 24 year old thinks i'm hot and then immediately after katie mm -hmm. starts making out with her i'm mm -hmm. like yes and Wasn't you can that great? oh my god that was so good and you could tell schwartz is like affected by it because he's like she's cock blocking me and i feel like she's competing with me i'm like why would she need to compete with she you she does not need to and what does katie say in her interstitial she's like, like try harder try harder be better <laughs> yeah. like do more then <laughs> I love I know. it. And she's right. I love it. I and think that it's was great. A, that, was that sexy? Like that was that kiss kind of sexy? Because I felt absolutely nothing <laughs> personally. Like, um, but I was just like, does Katie mean this? Or is she just doing this to be petty? Either of those scenarios is okay with me. Yeah. But like, I didn't find it sexy no i didn't really either i didn't find like chemistry or like a spark yeah. i think tori was way more into it than katie was but katie's like i like that uh, yeah let me kiss you again i think katie's low-key but high-key doing this just to be petty like i don't think she's like 
genuinely interested in dating Tori. Did it surprise you when Katie said that she had slept with a girl before and or girls before? Yeah, I was like, dang, okay, yeah, Katie. So. Miss Fluid Baby, I yes. love it. I mean, and you're divorced mm. and you're single, ready to mingle. I mean, get out and get you some. I think she made a comment too, being like, I've always been attracted to women, but I was stuck with t- Schwartz for yeah. so long and so we didn't get to do that. And so now I'm exploring that. And I'm like, you know what? Good. You go, queen. Mm-hmm. I Date whoever you want. Uh, looking better than you ever yes. have in your life. Queen. Dime. She's beautiful. Fatty. Your daughter. Beautiful. My wife has a crush on her. I know. <laughs> I'm like, how dare you? Well, you have a crush on Ariana, right? A little bit, like, yeah. You like the blondes. Yeah. She likes the brunettes. Yeah. So it's pretty cute. Which is pretty funny. Yeah. yeah. So that was interesting, the whole love triangle thing. And then we have Lala and Joe getting hot dogs together which was kind of weird yeah apparently tom schwartz told joe to reach out to lala and to maybe have a conversation maybe sharing with lala what her intentions are why i mean what joe says in her interstitial is basically like lala is the gatekeeper into the friend group so if i can get her on my side then like i can maybe be accepted by all of these people um, I think Lala is definitely showing up to advance the plot lines and the storylines mm. and try to create a good season because she's been talking in various podcasts about how somebody needed to do that. Like Ariana, she says, brings nothing to the table. Wow. Like she's never really had any storylines in previous seasons. Like somebody's got to shake something up. So that's why I think um, she's doing this. And I think somebody on Reddit also said that because Lala keeps mentioning how she's softening, yeah, she's trying to be a softer Lala, that maybe what she was hoping was that she would actually be able to talk to Rachel and like be the person who allows Rachel back into the group. But because Rachel didn't want to do that, she's now kind of shifting her focus on to Joe. To Weird. T- try and maybe demonstrate that she's soft. But see, Lala's not soft. Mm-mm. Lala pops off immediately and another thing i heard about lala is that she you know obviously she is on this self-development journey and trying to be a better person yeah whatever. but she does not go to therapy i think i told you this off the pod oh. I, don't, I don't know if i said it on the pod but like she refuses to go to therapists because she does not trust them <laughs> so the only way she's getting better and personally developing is through her own guidance Mm. but i'm like you're nuts yeah you have a rage disorder you're not the appropriate person to guide yourself into enlightenment you need somebody to help you not to mention you talk shit about fucking everybody so it's like i I was actually talking about this with your daughter like earlier today we were talking about how there's like kind of a trend on like social media nowadays where people are like into healing and self-help and like I'm working on myself and I'm doing my shadow work, but like nobody's actually (laughs) like doing it. Like they're just saying it and it's just kind of like the half assed version of it. And so that's kind of what Lala gives me. I'm like, okay, congrats. You're sober. That's cool. Yeah. But that's like one step of the way, you know, and congrats. You are getting divorced from your weird uh, uh, frog man of a (laughs) ex-husband who you claim to love, which I don't believe. Like, it's just, I don't know. She's yeah, just... no, I, I think she's trying. Like, and if I can again give some perspective from somebody who's in her fifties, like in your twenties, that's your time to be crazy for sure. Like you think you know a lot, but you really don't know anything. You don't know shit. It's not until your thirties that you start to suspect that maybe you don't know shit. Yeah, and you want to start getting yourself together, and that's usually when people start to begin the journey of self improvement. And then by the time you hit your forties, you can apply a lot of the things that you learned in your twenties and your thirties. So when I look at somebody like Lala, I think, okay, she's early thirties. She realizes that she's got problems. She's got anger issues. She wants to be a better parent. She does not know how to go about helping herself, but I think she has an intention to do so so i'm hoping by the time she ends her 30s she will be a much better person hopefully so for somebody like me at my big age i can look at her and give her some grace but as somebody who is recapping a reality show like she's a fucking hypocrite <laughs> yeah i'm not seeing a whole lot of softness no. i'm just hearing a lot of talk for sure yeah for lala yeah and the only thing that was like really interesting about this whole jojo and lala conversation was like lala confronts joe about 
not knowing, like claiming that she didn't know that Sandoval was cheating on Ariana. And this is where Joe's like claiming ignorance. She's like, well, I thought Ariana and Sandoval had been broken up. So like I didn't ask. Okay, but how is that true when you went to Thanksgiving dinner at Ariana and Tom's house? She did? Yeah, remember there's the picture from a few episodes ago? Mm -hmm. So you were there celebrating the holidays with Tom and Ariana. When was Big Bear? I mean, I think Big Bear was like summertime or fall. Mm. So that's a bunch of bullshit. Yeah. And once again, I say I would have a lot more respect for you if you just told the truth and said, you know what? I'm so sprung over Tom Schwartz. This is something that he wanted me to do. And so that's why I didn't say anything. And I should have. And I made a big mistake. Yeah. But she's lying. Yeah, totally. Because she wants to fuck Schwartz and continue fucking Schwartz Mm -hmm. and get on his good graces. So that's the only reason why she's talking to Lala and trying to be a part of this fucked up friend group. It's cringe. Yep. And then we have um, Ariana and Katie going golfing with James and Allie, which was just kind of like a nothing burger. Yeah, the only thing interesting there was Ariana talking about forcing the sale of the home. Yeah. And apparently her attorneys have responded to Sandoval's janky offer. And they gave Sandoval a period of time to respond to that, to accept or reject. And if he doesn't, then they're going to compel the sale of the home. Uh, vis-a-vis court yeah so she's kind of breaking down how that's going to go and she's also talking about like the home that she is now envisioning for herself yeah which um i thought was really great and i love ali she's like oh my god manifest it right now (laughs) and james is like well just saying it is gonna allow you to manifest it and i'm just realizing we didn't really talk about the scene at the bar with ariana and sheena and um, Lala, where Ariana actually breaks down and cries. Oh, yeah. I forgot about because that. Because Lala's talking yeah. to her like, is there some part of you that feels like utterly rejected yeah. by this man that you loved for so long? And Ariana starts crying and she's like, absolutely. And I think Sheena says something like, I mean, don't you think it would be better if you could just find your own place, yeah. get your own spot so that you don't have to continue to put up with this? And Ariana's like, I know you guys are right. I know that's what I need to do. But it's so hard because this is my dream home. Like I wanted this house so bad. And the idea of losing it is just breaking my heart. Yeah. And I really felt for her in that moment. I did too. And it kind of made me pissed off at Lala and Sheena later in the episode yes. when they talk shit about it at paintball and i'm like god you guys like literally just had this moment with ariana where she's crying and she's like genuine like ariana may give off like mean girl energy Mm -hmm. but the way that i see that because i'm kind of that kind of a person like when i'm hurting or whatever i'm hard i'm like i'm super guarded i can come off really mean i've got rbf like don't fucking fuck with me but deep down there's somebody hurting there's it's a heartbreak and so i felt really bad for ariana there i forgot we i totally forgot to mention that when we were talking about it i did as well and you can see lala here giving her lots of love and lots of hugs and it's so it is really weird that in a later scene which i actually think is at the sperm bank where they start talking about her and oh, yeah, yeah. lala's like then just stop talking to me about your problems yeah because if you're not going to move i don't want to hear about this shit anymore i'm like what happened wow from the waterfront bar to the sperm bank right that allowed you to lose all of your empathy or did you never have any in the first place exactly yeah fake as fuck that's right and the other thing that that was funny at the golfing area was uh james calling out how fucking weird it is yeah. that katie is yeah. dating the same chick as schwartz he's like are we just gonna pretend like this is normal like what the fuck is going on here first katie fucks james or uh schwartz's best friend Max. and then she fucking is stealing his girl like what the fuck's going on and katie is just like oh yeah everything i do is in contemplation of how tom schwartz is going to feel about it and then we've got this great interstitial with james and he's like am i the only one that actually thinks this is really weird like you just ended up fucking tom schwartz's best friend and now you're stealing this girl who's yeah. like this young 24 year old girl like that's a little strange and so that's why we're questioning what your motivations are um but katie doesn't want to be questioned she nope. just wants to live her life i mean and eat a box <laughs> <laughs> more power to you girl she's empowered to do it oh yeah i, I love it for yeah. her honestly and then we have lala and sheena going to the cryo bank the sperm mm-hmm. bank or whatever and this was kind of interesting because lala's talking about like 
her reasoning behind getting a sperm donor. She wants a kid that's just hers. She doesn't want to have to deal with the custody issues. And she breaks down because she feels like she failed Ocean like immensely by divorcing her dad. And it, I guess she didn't want to divorce him. It was well, Randall. Well, cheated on her. Well, so yeah, so, so it she wasn't was her forced fault. to break up with him. Yeah, yeah. which but, but then she says like Ocean was conceived out of love. And I think I WhatsApped you last night yeah. when I was watching this. I'm all high and I'm like, you sent bitch. me a picture of Lala and Randall and she <laughs> like how can this beautiful woman have fallen in love with this gargoyle i don't get it uh, there's no theory under which this could possibly happen and the theory is money yeah Private it's very jets. intoxicating yeah. and she was hip- hypnotized by his funding and also i think she wanted to be more of a star i think she wanted to be cast in some of his busted ass whack ass <laughs> movies that he was doing with john travolta or whatever <laughs> Like that she was chasing fame and money. Yeah. And again, if she would just say that and talk about her actual um, motivations, I would respect it more. But I mean, when she broke down and cried, yeah, I believed that she Me too. loved him. And I, I also think she's crying for her child who's yeah. now going to have this fucked up split home problem, acrimonious relationship between her parents. And that's terrible. Yeah. Um, But I love that she's taken the reins of her own life and she wants to have a child and by the way i saw on social media that she had a gender reveal and she's having a guess boy girl oh my god another girl yay yeah, she's having another girl that's sweet i think it's really sweet and i do think she wants to be a good mom yeah i hope I agree. that she is a good mom although i was listening to a clip of her on her own podcast <sighs> where she was talking about ocean And Ocean, her daughter, was looking at a picture of Lala's father. And Lala was telling Ocean, oh, that's grandma's husband. And that's my daddy. And Ocean said something like, well, you don't have a husband. And Lala was laughing. But on her pod, she's like, and so I wanted to bitch slap her. Which is, I'm sh- it's of course, it's a joke. But, but then she's like, but how smart is she at three years old that she knows that? I'm just like, Lala, <sighs> be careful yeah. how you speak yep. about people that you care about and that you love and especially your child. All of this is recorded for posterity. Yep. Your daughter at some point may go back through the records, honey, and hear yep. you say something like that. And even if you're joking, I thought that was fucked up. Maybe it's me. Maybe I'm a prude. But I just, that's not something I would say. No, I agree with that. Like, I've thought about that even like with Instagram parents that have their fucking kids plastered all over social media. I'm just like, you guys, you don't realize that the internet's forever. And like people are keeping digital records of all of this shit. So many of these parents are going to get sued by their children. And I cannot wait. I think that's coming within the next five to 10 years on the outside. You're going to have so many children because they're not getting any money for it either. uh, Yeah, there's no protections for kids like there are protections for children in film. Yeah. I think on television, but not for like reality kids and not for YouTube kids. Mm -mm. It's absolutely terrible. That's lame that she said that about her kid. I get it. It's a joke, but it's like... She's edgy. Yuck. Critch. And then this is also at the um, sperm bank. This is where you were saying Lala and Sheena kind of talk shit about Ariana, which I'm just like, guys, uh, this is going to be a point of contention of the reunion for sure. Mm -hmm. Ariana, I hope, goes off on Lala for being a fake ass bitch. And like... Whether you're doing this for the cameras and it's like not actually genuine or not, I don't care. Like to say all this kind of crap behind Ariana's back is really fucking messed up. Like especially when you guys are consoling her earlier in the episode. you know how deeply she's hurting. Yes. uh, I did hear, I think, (laughs) Lala on another podcast say that nobody really raised their voice at the reunion. What? But there were some very intense things that happened and something happens in the reunion that has never happened before. I definitely think... Think there's going to be a confrontation between Ariana and Lala and potentially Sheena. Um, I do know that Lala has since unfollowed Ariana and Katie Maloney <gasps> on Instagram and wow. when questioned about it on Amazon Live. She's like, Yeah, I'm just kind of OCD about numbers and I had an odd number and I wanted it to be even. And so I thought about the two people that I really wasn't interested in. <laughs> and so I just unfollowed them. Okay. I'm like, okay, why don't you? <laughs> own your fucking shit if you want to unfollow them because you had a fight and you're no longer close say that why are you hiding behind ocd and numbers so dumb lame so fake yeah god i can't 
Then we have Schwartz getting his hair bleached by Joe. And this was so cringe because I'm like, I know Joe's probably trying to plug her business. And I'm a hairstylist. This is the worst way to do it. It's because bad. his hair looked terrible. It looked horrible. It looked absolutely terrible. And there's like this weird vibe between Joe and Schwartz because then he tells her, yeah, Sandoval's hosting a singles night. And she's like, what? I want to come. He's yeah. like, okay, you can come. He also tells her about the girl he's dating, but Katie's also dating her too. And so Joe thinks that's weird. But you know, deep down, Joe's just like, why are you dating someone else? I really want to know what the conversations are behind the scenes because mm. I heard Joe speak about this and Joe is trying to say that she and Tom were together and had an agreement that they were together like on the way to the singles party, mm. like they were talking about whether they were going to wear the green bracelet or whether they're going to say that they were single or whether they were going to wear the yellow or the red bracelet, which is that I'm taken or it's complicated. And they both agreed. This is what Joe said. They both agreed that they were going to wear the red bla bracelet saying that they're taken. And then Tom gets there, puts on the green bracelet and then starts making out with that fucking clout goblin uh -huh. weirdo who yeah. took his cap. So that's interesting to say that, though, because when Tom Schwartz is in her salon, she's calling him bro. Uh -huh. And she's like, what about your date? How'd it go? So in front of the camera, she's seeming to understand that they're not together, that he's dating around, that he's single. It's so like, which one is it? Were you together behind the scenes or are you conflating it, making it something that it never was? I'm confuzzled. Yeah, I am too. There's some weird shit going on. I think he's like ashamed to be associated with her. I think he's ashamed to admit he would even be in a relationship with her because he'd feel judged. Like maybe it's like because of her appearance or how she looks. I don't fucking know. I think he's a shallow fucking person. Yes. I'm not saying like Joe's ugly or anything like She's that. She's not. I just think that Schwartz is a shallow piece of shit and he's worried about his image and worried about who's he's, yes. who he's associated with. Yes. So of course he's like, yeah, I'm single. I'm not in a relationship at all but then when you call joe up for a pity fuck you're telling her you love her and you want to be in a relationship with her and you guys got this good connection and then there's those scenes from the flashback of like last episode or whatever of him being like yeah in a different timeline we could be together and he's saying that on camera mm -hmm. like he's fucked up like i think he's manipulating her yes i do as and well. leading her on and i hate him but i mean at the same time Ladies, if a man wants you, there's not going to be any question about it Preach. because he's going to do what he needs to do to have you. Yep. And he's going to do what he needs to do to keep you. And if he's being wishy-washy at all, dump his ass. He's not ready or he doesn't really want it or he Facts. just wants to hit it and quit it. And so, Joe, you're in your 30s, honey. Mm -hmm. This is something that you should know. He is not making a commitment. The shit that he's saying to you behind the scenes it's not the shit that he's saying to you in front of his friends yep. and on camera yep so she should be able to realize that this is fake yeah that he doesn't mean that he's not he does not have a good intention for her yeah she should dump him she should but, but she, she wants won't. him i know she says that tom schwartz is her favorite person i don't get it it's Why? weird i don't understand he's a non-person he's literally an npc i know he's like somebody in the background that makes no impact he's at so all vanilla. on the vibe in a room yeah vibe check. The vibe check yeah no vibes no vibe check. not at all not at all and then we have um lala sheena ariana and katie getting drinks yeah and this is where lala like breaks it to the group you know oh yeah i had hot dogs with joe and katie immediately like unleashes she's like mad why the fuck are you getting drinks with joe she's a lying piece of shit and like lala on her interstitials is saying like i don't think joe's that bad i mm -hmm. think she's like harmless like she's just kind of a weirdo like whatever it's not that big of a deal but katie does not like no joe. she basically says i'm your friend this chick is um, a non motherfucking factor. This wow. person is nobody. Also, this person is banging my ex husband. So, what compels you to go out and have a hot dog with this girl when you ought to be my friend? And this really seems to surprise Lala. She's like, "What? Do you, what's the problem?" Yeah, just like I, she heard from Tom Schwartz, and so she reached out to me, and we just had a hot dog. It's not a big deal. It's not like I took her to meet my kid or anything. And Katie's like, "I don't care. I." value loyalty and i value consistency and i think lala's i don't know 
exactly what Lala says. It's something like, it's not up to me to make you happy about what I'm doing in my life. Yeah. Like, <laughs> if that's what you guys want to do is be all pissed off at Rachel and pissed off at Joe. If you guys are still here all these months later, then that shit's on you. It's yeah. not on me. I can do what the fuck I want. Yeah, I don't really understand, like, the Katie Joe hate. Like, I mean, I understand her not liking her. Like, I get it. You know, she's best friends with your ex-husband. She, like, moved in with Schwartz, and essentially. Fucked him. And fucked him, like, right after you guys divorced. I get it. After pretending to be Katie's friend. I mean, not a close friend. She was Kristen's best friend. Okay. So, like, Katie knew about her. She was on the periphery of Katie's life, but she pretended to like Katie. And then when the breakup happened, she texted Katie and said, like, I just want you to know I care so much about you. Like, I'm really sorry this is all happening, but I'm here for you. And then immediately proceeded to start fucking Tom Schwartz. Oh. So that's why Katie's salty about it i'd be salty too i guess i get that but i guess it's not like on the same level as like rachel raquel Absolutely you know like not. where she was best Absolutely friends not. with everybody and so like i understand them ousting her out of the group and stuff but i'm like joe like who cares but i guess i, I guess that makes sense why she'd be salty about it but i'm like katie i don't think she cares about joe i think she cares about lala oh okay and yeah. why lala is doing this this is not makes the first sense. time lala has done this because lala called rachel and then she told right. the group and Ariana's like, why are you doing that? Like, Lala is moving weird out here on the streets. And right. so Katie's like, why are we continuing to have this fucking conversation with you, Lala? Mm. Are you a girl's girl? Or are you just trying to fucking create scenes? Or are you a guy's girl? Who are you? She's fake. <laughs> and Lala's like, I'm just soft, Katie. I'm in my mm. softer era. Okay, like, whatever. Okay, it doesn't seem so soft. Yeah, it seems, seems like you're like playing a knife, all fields. And it's in my back. Yeah, that makes sense now that you put some context to it. Yeah. Then we're at singles night with the guys, Sandoval and Schwartz go there. And then Joe's there oh my God. with Schwartz. And it's really awkward now Beatrice. that you tell me about the whole conversation about right. the shit. I'm like, that's weird. I, I don't know. This whole vibe. I could not take how much Joe was just peeing all over Schwartz <laughs> to claim <laughs> him. And stuff. Like constantly touching him, constantly doing his hair. And I think even Kyle's just like, Joe... If you keep doing that, he's not going to be able to meet anybody. And she's like, oh, I'm just like trying to help him out here, make his hair look good. But I'm like, stop. Mm. Stage five clinger. And even Sandoval's like, it's fucking weird. Like their yeah. whole vibe is weird. And he calls it out in his interstitial. He's like, I think they're on two different pages. Yes. He's like, I don't know. Schwartz got some kind of superpower with women where he can like make them fall in love with them and but he's not really interested in them and i'm like you know what it is yeah he's being a fuck boy like he's leading her on and he's just doing it so he has somebody to make him feel good about himself because he's a loser right. shorts i mean like so if sandoval's calling it out their weird friend kyle's calling it out everybody else all the raccoons are calling it out mm -hmm. like come on shorts like what are you doing and come on joe what yeah are you for doing? real why yeah. do you need to do this why are you chasing somebody so hard? Have some self-respect. I want I that for you. It's super cringy. It's, and Go ahead. Oh, I was <laughs> just going to say, yeah. And then he makes out with that chippy. We've got to get to this girl named Gabby. I know. I mean, talk about a clout goblin. I know. <laughs> just saw the cameras there, showed up, and immediately like zeroed in on Schwartz, asked for a fucking kiss, it was disgusting. It was gross. Took his hat, never gave it back. Mm -hmm. And also um, in Joe's interview with Rachel, she said that that hat was given to him by his father, who I believe has passed on. What? And Joe knew that. And so when she comes back while they're like talking, she's just like, um, she's got your hat on. And Schwartz says, it's okay. I have plenty others in storage. Um, Joe says on the pod, she's like, I knew that wasn't true. I knew that that was a hat that his dad had given him. And so I was trying to help him out. But like, OK, if you're going to give it to this girl. And then I was on social media. God. And that girl, Gabby, showed up somehow in my algorithm. And she had a story and she was in her closet showing all of the hats that she's stolen from guys around LA and there was Schwartz's hat that his deceased father gave to him the fuck yeah. why is Schwartz such a bitch baby that he couldn't he's have said fucking that fucking weak dick dude like he's weak why sauce. and I think like a strong sexual woman really intimidates him he's one of those guys I mean who does not know what to do like I guess I get it in a sexual sense if you want to be dominated by some hot woman fine but like grow up here and be like that's my dead father's hat thank yeah. you and like no yeah don't fucking touch my hat weirdo? such a weirdo trying to be on camera 
I think it's all a status thing. You've never been kissed like me before. Like Cringe. you, you could have HPV, <laughs> the human pampaloma, popoloma, pomodoro <laughs> sauce virus. Don't fucking put your saliva in my Ew. mouth, Bo. Fucking weirdo. Cringe AF. And um, Joe is seeing this. Joe's seeing Tom Schwartz make out with this rando. And she's like, she comes up and she's like, okay, well, I'm bouncing. I got to go. And then she walks away and she's like, ew. Yeah, super yeah. gross. Yeah. And this is where we get the interstitials of Schwartz and Joe. Like Schwartz is like, yeah, I think Joe's like way too into me. And maybe we can't be as close as we are and still dating other people. So like maybe I got to talk to her, I guess. And then Joe in her talking head, she's like, I know the truth. We're still hooking up. Yeah. He tell We tell he love tell each other that we love each other like what the fuck is going on yes. so if these like i think i was whatsapping you and you were talking about this you're like mm -hmm. if these are interstitials are recorded after the fact mm -hmm. like it's still happening yes he's such a piece of trash She's speaking in present tense that they're still hooking up and he's saying he loves her <sighs> and i think at this point like they live together or like she crashes at his place in his spare bedroom and she's talking like he comes home from like a night out and like gets into her bed like it's just a thing they're doing and it's unfortunate because her heart is involved as we will get to mm -hmm. i think in the next scene yeah we do pretty much because we have like the weird paintballing scene yeah which is like whatever like the girls don't paintball but the guys do and sheena's talking about how this is like booty she's like where's the vip bathroom like right. why am i here and i'm like because your husbands want to paintball. But the only thing that was interesting about that was the girls yes. pointing out the fact that all these 20-year-old chippies and 20-year-old boys are hanging out with Schwartz and Sandoval. Very weird, rando people just to fill the roster. And I think also Lala downloads Allie on what happened with the conversation with Katie. And yes. this is where she once again refers to Katie as a miserable fucking unhappy person. Mm -hmm. And she's like, I know my friend is unhappy, but like, I don't point that in my direction. Okay. And Lala. she's just making herself to seem so much more put together and yeah. conscious than Katie is. And I'm like, Katie is so empowered right now in her life. Katie is going after what the fuck she wants. Katie's got her own place. Katie is a baddie like... You sound jealous. Yep. Hella jealous. You sound jealous. fucking jealous. Totally. Totally jealous. And then we have James also calling out uh, Schwartz for bleaching his hair. Oh, yeah. <laughs> He's like, you're covering up your grays. Yeah. I'm like, I love James this yes. season. He's so funny. Yes. And then like the last scene is Schwartz going to Joe's apartment. Right. And this is where he's like, I got to break it up, break up with you. I'm not into you. I he don't does relationship not with break you. up with her. She breaks up with him. Well, so they're in the kitchen and they're having the conversation. And he's like, so what happened with you the other night at the singles function? Mm -hmm. And she's just like, yeah, that was a little weird. Um, and they start to have a clarifying conversation about their relationship in which he says very straightforwardly. Let's give him credit, even though it's belated and it should have happened months e earlier. Mm -hmm. But he's like, I don't want to be in a relationship with you. I want to date people. I want to put my dick in other people all the time. And so this thing between me and you is just not going to work. They sit on the couch and at some point, Joe is really emotional. And she's like, do I embarrass you? Are you mm -hmm. embarrassed to be seen with me? And the answer is yes. Yes. And the answer is he's just that vapid and superficial and fucking lame. Yep. That the answer is yes, but he doesn't have the balls to say it. Yeah. He's like, no, I like our vibe and everything. And she's Absolutely like. not Joseph. I know. Oh my God. Stop with the names. It's so embarrassing. T-Money and Joseph. I can't cringe are we in middle school yes okay that's weird well and like the truth is maybe they probably are matched pretty well but like he is such a vapid shallow person that he doesn't want to be seen with her because mm -hmm. he is embarrassed by yeah. her and he's ashamed to be with her because maybe people think she's weird and he just doesn't like they that do. status yeah that's probably why maybe he was with katie because katie was hot and right. beautiful yeah so and well liked and popular yeah yeah <sighs> yeah it's it's really unfortunate and I feel very bad for her because you can just see right there in the conversation as she's coming to the realization like, oh, shit, um, I have feelings for you. And he even says, I, I know I feel the same, but like we can't continue to do this. And she's just like, OK, well, I guess it's done. Yeah. She's like, I she can't see you crying. again. Yeah. And she's like, well, He's like, yeah, maybe we shouldn't see each other as much. And she's like, or at all. At all. And then he's like sad by that. He's like, what? No. No, he doesn't. He's just like, okay, maybe. He like he's so lukewarm across the board. He equivocates on everything. He's like, okay, that's fine. He doesn't fucking care. 
No. He's well, like, whatever you want, I don't care. Yeah, like, in his interstitial, I think he was, like, trying to be like, oh, I'm sad about it. I want to hang out with her. I like her, whatever. And I'm like, okay. Yeah. This is why I think he's giving her mixed signals. Yeah. I think he tells her this shit a lot, maybe, like, on the camera or, like, in front of people. No, we're not dating at all. And even, I think Joe says in her talking head at some point, she's like, I'm tired of being the secret. Yeah. Which made me really sad because I bet he does tell her shit to, like, mm-hmm. just keep having her suck his dick like yep. yeah i you're my girlfriend you're my secret girlfriend like it's cool like yeah we have this connection but like nobody knows about it it's really great well she ends up getting up and saying i gotta call my dad i feel yeah. really bad and she's crying and she leaves the house and on the one hand it had to be done like yeah. you had to be really clear with her because obviously you really haven't been up to this point but on the other hand i mean it's very sad that it came to that and it happened on camera and she's got to feel really bad about herself. Yep. Well, and then in her talking head now is saying we're still hooking up. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, you but still you're letting that up? happen though. Right. I mean like, Joe, you got to take some responsibility for your own life. Are you consenting to that? Yes, you are. Why are you doing that? Right. Like, why aren't you requiring better for yourself than fucking Tom set Schwartz? I know. Tom Sorry, said, well, they're much, basically the same. Well, though. I mean, one's just way more forthright about it. Way more front street with it. Yep. Tom Schwartz is behind the scenes being an evil dude. Yeah. Just constantly going mm-hmm. back to, to dumb old Joe and well, Joe people just who are vulnerable it. yeah and don't have self-worth yep. and don't feel good about themselves and they feel like oh my god Tom Schwartz from Vanderpump Rules yeah wants to bang me that must mean I am somebody totally and it's really sad that he would be a predator in that way and allow himself to do that it's just really really gross but yeah. I say again if a man wants you he is gonna let you know honey yep and like Joe that's exactly what it is like she just doesn't value yeah. herself enough to be like no because even with me with my fucking ex constantly messaging me not while I was married to your daughter but like before I would fall for it again and I'd be like oh like yeah I miss us you know like I wouldn't hook up or anything but I'm like yeah I so I feel for Joe in that regard but it's like girl like go to therapy and like get out of LA yeah I mean go go to a surfer town go to the Pacific Northwest or somewhere where people are gonna think you're really fucking cool because you are cool you are cool you have a lot going for you yeah and you're quirky and fun and like you like to live a good life like a fun life why would you want to be around a bunch of people who take shots at you and call you sloppy Joe yeah and even Lala in her I think it was her Amazon love live somebody asked her like are you friends with Joe and she's like I am not friends with Joe like please make no mistake I mean she's cool she's fine but we're not friends like Jesus Christ people yeah be kind to one another seriously That's coming from me I'm <laughs> I routinely from call people twats and cunts and threaten their <laughs> lives but I mean in <laughs> practical in real life application like it doesn't cost you anything to be nice to be kind to somebody who's obviously got something going on with them exactly making some bad choices but right like, jesus makes me sad i know i feel bad for joe joseph well, this was okay this yeah. episode was okay was we mid. needed to ramp up though we need a little bit more drama malicious and not the same retreading of the drama we've already seen for 11 episodes we get it tom wants us to hate ariana we get it Tom Schwartz is the aw shucks good guy. That's what they want us to believe. We Mm -hmm. get it. Like, give us something new. I'm ready for something new. I want some fights. I want some drama. I want some screaming at each other. Mm -hmm. Give it to me. Yep. Well, we will continue, obviously, to follow Vanderpump Rules. We'll be back next week for the next episode. Um, Is there anything else that we need to say to these beautiful raccoons? Well, if you love our podcast, I sure hope you go to your favorite podcast platform and leave us a glowing five-star review. It really helps us grow the pod, so thank you so much. And don't forget about our Patreon. This is the one way that you can really help to support the dumpster and allow us to continue to do what we love to do for you and until next week when we come back to talk seeking sister wife please do not forget that we have nothing but love for you and peace out bye bye guys